Hello everybody, my name is Anthem. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts of Iron 4 Kaisreich today. We're going to be playing as the Union of Britain because they actually have a new focus tree. And it's one of the few countries, one of the few major countries I would say, that we actually have not given a run through quite yet. So, we're going to start off basically with our 36 Congress Trade Unions. It's going to last uh, 140 days. It's a long one, but we're going to be getting a lot of uh, events and decisions uh, once we went through. So, Tech, oh, we got sort of four tax slots, which is really nice, uh, considering that we were just playing as the K and T, and we start off with, I believe, two. So this is definitely a step up. Uh, I will make a, a slight note that I am feeling a little bit sick. So if my voice sounds off, that would be the reason. So apparently, we have like two more dockyards. As Britain, we are going to actually want to have a pretty powerful navy. Um. Because we're on, a, we're on an island. It makes perfect sense. So, we have some free civilian factories. So, 20 military, 36 civilian. I think that's honestly enough civilian factories, at least right now. And we're just going to go build up a handful. Just say two. We'll go with, you know, three military factories just to start us off with four now. We also have, I, I believe we start with 18 divisions. And that should be okay. Your first job is essentially just going to be to defend the ports. Because really nothing else can happen. You can put troops into um, France if you wanted to, but I don't really think that's necessary at the moment. Yeah, so you guys just defend ports. Uh, really nothing else you need to do. Don't worry about that boat that's a little bit uh, outdated. It should be okay. Um, what are our special events here? Uh, never surrender. Like, what could just be gun? And Francis capitulated. Okay, we get some more bonuses with that. British Home Guard. I think that's going to give us more time, more troops, and probably giving us some more boats as well, which would be quite nice. So, do we have any stuff in reserve? The answer is yes, but not a ton. Um, I think we're probably just going to go with tank support would be nice as well. You got 20 combat with. You are at 18. So I'm going to switch you over to just be a 20 like this. Train up one of you, or two of you, we'll train up one of you and then do regular divisions here. We'll train up a motorized as well. Apparently we're not building motorized, we can just do that right away. So let's look at these numbers. So we got a lot of, we're building some bombers with some fighters. Naval bombers are nice, but I feel like you're a little bit more important, at least for right now. Um... We could probably cut down one on fighters. We're going to probably want three more on artillery. So we'll do something like this. I think for now it should be fine. We'll also import some tungsten and some rubber. And we should be good to go, at least for right now. And we're also no template for the support equipment. That's okay. We'll do something with it in the future. So the New Britain. After the defeat of France, the United Kingdom's war with Germany dragged on inconclusively for two years. In 1921, the stalemate had finally broken out when Lloyd George agreed to the German proposal of a peace with honor. While British, Britain's overseas territories remained largely intact, the faith of the people did not. In 1925, disaster struck. A minor later dispute in the coal fields of South Wales quickly escalated, and after six weeks, six weeks of rioting, looting, and pamphleteering, most of the establishment, including the royal family, had fled to Canada. The original government of, re of the revolutionary groups uh, dissolved what little, what little was left of Parliament and declared a new Union of Britain. Eleven years later, the Trade Union Congress still forms the centerpiece of politics of the Federated and Democratic Union. The British people have secured on their island content to build socialism in isolation, protected by the strong Republican Air Force and Navy, with each country protected by its own popular militia, uh, who act both to reserve military and a new police. Yet the world seemingly ready to erupt in the chaos. Many are starting to wonder if Britain has a duty to spread the revolution to her former colonial territories. After all, the monarchists of Canada cannot be allowed to plot against the Union indefinitely. I did see, through our folk street, that you can technically just attack Canada yourself. Um, but that's just like such a long folk street that I feel like by the time you're able to get a war goal against Canada, they're probably already going to attack you. So let's see, we have 486 planes. That seems really bad. Actually, you know, it's about like average. More so than more than France, but probably around what Germany has, at least to begin with. 
we have... Please let me look here. We have 300 boats. About the same as Germany. About twice as many as the Canadians. We're still outnumbered in terms of uh, naval vessels, but I... Can hopefully do something okay there. Because right now, our biggest issue with our navy is going to be the oil. We don't have any real oil supplies at all. Like Venezuela does. I know Venezuela can, I believe, now go syndicalist. Um, to justify war goal, you need 25% of all attention. So, I mean, you could theoretically try to invade some of these guys, like, really early on. See, maybe there's something in here that will allow us to get a foreign comrade, show a force. We can maybe get Ireland on our side, which would be pretty good to at least get one front kind of off our back. Trail network. I don't see anything that's necessarily going to get us more oil. I think France has something in here for like securing oil fields. Or is it just Germany that has that? It might just be Germany, which is a bit strange. Because Germany actually has more way more access to oil uh, than the international does. But I think also so we should be doing. What's our total fuel capacity right now? 130,000, which is actually, like, not very good at all. Um, again from a final was 48. I think we just need to start also just immediately importing oil from, like, anywhere, essentially. Um, we're exporting 9. We're, ex we're extracting 18, which is not too bad. So we'll get that from, say, the United States. You know, just a single one. Just fill up our fuel reserves ASAP so we can actually maybe fight some sort of uh, war here. Slowly building everything up. Like, what? How long is that? How long is it gonna take for us to get ready? Less than a year. Less than a year. Oh, it's actually not too bad. The motorized are a little bit much, but we should be able to pull these guys pretty, pretty soon. Just kind of shrink these down. I don't think it's very important. See that at the moment. Okay, so let's deploy all these guys here. And it's mostly, I think, just for um, training out new troops. Most of our troops seem like they're already pretty reinforced. And it, it'll be so much nicer having troops that are actually decent. As opposed to, you know, in the KMT series which we're at right now. And all of our troops are essentially hot garbage. So it'll be nice. It'll also be nice to kind of see uh, what goes on in China from, like, an outsider perspective. We can maybe see the Qing Empire fall apart. And who's going to come out on top? I don't know. But we will uh, eventually see here. So we got about two months left on our oil. Dan's hands declared a war. That's fine. Like, is there a way that you could theoretically rush? No, because you need all of these to be done. And I don't think there's any way you can possibly get that done before Germany would declare war on you. I might be wrong. I mean, only 35 day focuses. That's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, this requires just one of the following, to be fair. But still, this is about a year's worth of focuses, at least. But I feel like it's still, like, a lot, lot more than that. The Austrian Empire is withdrawn from Italy. Poland has declared a republic. Okay. Does, what's that mean for us? Does that mean anything for us? No, because it's not victory for the people, unfortunately. Uh, that would have been much better for us, but. Yeah, 1936 State Council Union has begun. Poland Chiefs to join the Entente. I've never seen them join the Entente. It's, it's such a weird thing for them to do. This one. Are they all 35 days? No, some of the older ones are still 70 days, unfortunately. So he might just focus on doing the 35 days first. 70 days, 70s. Okay. What, what does aiding our comrades actually do for us? The war in uh, China has begun. It just says they get support. 
But I don't know what that actually means. We probably want to influence Norway. If you also want to probably influence Australasia. And honestly, probably rush our way down to getting Ireland on our side. Like, I don't think I want to declare war on the Irish. Uh, early wars, I really don't think right now. We should, we should be getting involved in. So the economic policy vote. Okay, so the base watered. Okay, so what do we want? Is it just... Uh, Band and centralized. Autonomy for home nations. And streamlined. Okay. Um, I mean, does it, I mean, does it say what it actually does? Like, do these matter at all? Okay, no, they, they do change things. So your military, your admirals, does it? Because I know these change. Federalist or maximist economy. You're two times for industry. Some civilian building slots are kind of bad. I said, no, these, these don't matter. Just the outside ones. The so two times bonus for inf industry. Production efficiency, the cap goes up. More production efficiency and out factory output. Military construction speed, I really don't think is actually that good. Factory output was 10%. More factory construction speed. I think this one's better. I don't think factory construction speed is a 10% boost, which isn't bad, but I honestly don't think it's really that good either. So we're just going to go for the Federalist. It allows us to kind of do either one if I change my mind in the future. But I don't really see that being... Like, th th this, th these bonuses, I think, are just kind of meh. This is like a new lead and field. Federalist, I'm assuming, also gives us the most options. But after this, it only affects, I think, like, the top tree. And these all just require one of the following. Okay. So, dissolve the militias. Remove national speed or militias. Political power minus 100. Or you change militias to reform militias. Attack and core territory goes up even more. More recruit population. Division organization goes up by 10%. What's it at now? It's still going to be a negative 10% penalty. And you are what? Becomes a general, naval commander. Political power goes down. Organization goes up. Planning speed goes up. Division organization plus 10%. Max planning goes up. I do think just dissolving the militias... But I mean, going for Federalist again, because I think I want Central Command. But I also think I want to reform the militias. But I'm probably just going to go for Federalist a second time. Just I think that seems to give me just the most options. And I know it also affects this tree here. So I'm probably going to go down Status Quo, which is a little bit boring. Uh, I will admit. Home Rule is kind of bad because it just releases countries. So you definitely don't want to go for the Autonomist here. But I'm pretty sure probably just going to go down the, the, the Federalist tree. Nothing too, too crazy. So France has gone... They went Totalist. Um, I don't think it really matters too much. They're probably going to go down War Economy because that's generally, I think, like the best one. Italy we don't know quite yet. But if Austria is pulled out of, uh, the, like, out of Italy entirely, then that probably gives them a lot of, uh, maneuverability here. So we're going to build some oil factories, uh, not oil factories, some refineries up here in Scotland. But I do think we need some... Local Fox is making product. We'll just keep going for the Federalist. It's fine. I mean, you still have... You have a non-aggression pact, you have military access, but you're not guaranteed by Austria at all. Maybe the Italian Republic can still join the Austrian faction in the future? But as of right now, it doesn't seem like they're really going to be doing much. Also, can I... Do I have Marine Divisions research? I do not. So I think as soon as one of these are done, I'm going to immediately build some Marines and just kind of prepare for an invasion of, like, Northern Germany. Or at least try to land... 
Dun okay, no, Dunkirk's a little bit unlikely. Norway, you are going... We don't know what Norway's doing. We don't know what Sweden or Finland's doing. So we really don't know anybody who's going to be our ally in the future. As unfortunate as that is. These guys are training up, you know, quite nicely, I would say. I lost all tanks right now. We actually have a surplus of tanks. I'm kind of surprised by that. Again, we're going to go for Federalist. Just because it gives me... Because like, the two I want can only be done if you choose the Federalist. That the yeah there we go got a new pope the third international France has gone through hold first Congress the international of course we will go as far as I know I don't know if there's any reason that you would ever not want to attend maybe there's more um, decision in the future Chinese factions left cam T Zulia. I did not know there was an entire thing for China. That would have been very useful to know when I was playing as the, as the KMT. Uh, of course, to do whatever we can to help out CNT. We do want some sort of ally in the south. We don't want France to be fighting a two-front war. Um, generally, doesn't lead to the best outcomes. Definitely pledge of support for the American worker. Snowden has resigned. Get two percent, two percent stability. Quite, quite nice. Also getting some more divisions, which is good. The white hair, uh, white hair horror stories. Madrid and Barcelona. Got thirty-seven days until you are ready to go. How long until my research is done? Because I, I do want to get Marines ASAP. About two weeks. Okay, nothing too, too bad. Yeah, no, we'll keep on, we'll support everybody. Like, why would I not? Especially once we do Britain with Indian interest now. Cambridge Congress. We do probably show a force. One of the following must be true. We definitely don't want to start a war too early. Even, when, even though when we played as France, we were, um, like, we've beat the Germans back pretty easily. By starting the war super early. I think right now, I don't trust the AI to do the same kind of a uh, miracle. I mean, does it? I don't know if it really matters who's uh, in charge of Britain at the moment. Got some free military factories. What do we need most of? Rifles at 185 days. 199. Actually, we're still pretty well supplied, I would say. So, put two more factories into infantry equipment, at least for right now. Hopefully our um, Air Force 529 planes. I mean, things are looking pretty okay. We are max on fuel. So for my boats here, we're going to put in some admirals. And we're going to do some maneuvers here. You know, train them up as best we can. Because they're also very green. How much fuel does that take? Like, are we, we're probably going to run out of fuel. Okay, so one fleet right now can sail for 59 days. But if I had to send my entire fleet... How much fuel would that last? It's about two weeks of fuel for the entire navy to kind of do some maneuvering. That's really bad, I think. I do have transport research, right? Yes, okay. So that's at least somewhere to start off with. Improve light guns. I think we do need to focus more on our naval stuff. Then 50 naval power. We could do this. Make all of our boats better. Things aren't... Why are you so expensive? Oh, because we're ahead of time. Wait. Are we? I guess so. Um... 
It's only gonna be a year, like it's half cost. But we probably just want to um Submarine you know what? Submarine torpedo attack was 20%. That seems really good. So we'll spend some points. Done in 82 days. And actually, yeah, I do want some Marines. Just to prepare some invasions, because I don't know who's going to join what side quite yet. We're still a little bit uh, in the dark. About the futures for Britain at the moment. Which is a real shame. But the Congress is almost ready. Even though we just elected somebody, so I'm not too sure what they're still talking about at this point. Like, we've already... We've already voted in the Congre uh, Congregationist. Deploy you guys into the army. Just guard some ports for now. And we have some dockyards. Are we training? Are we building convoys? We're not. So we're going to have like at least some convoys going to get built in the background. 182 is not enough. And we're almost out of fuel, but that's okay. Did you guys at least train up a decent amount? Ah, you're like halfway out of green. That's not too bad. And it takes five years for us to, uh... Do capacity, current consumption. I mean, I guess they are still trying to train up. They get a 10% defense and... Okay. So we probably, yeah, we do want to get our boats as good as humanly possible. Probably also build some, build some uh, synthetic refineries up in the north as well. And then after this, we can probably go for... Three more military factories in the Midlands. Britain within the international status quo. Is the political power and a little bit of stability? And this one we can't do until the second World Creek is already over. So you're just okay, so you're basically a 15% stability boost. We're at 52%. I don't think that's that bad right now. Um Probably want to go for some of these very cheap ones, the 35-day focuses. we we'll go for the common land first. But I think this is going to be a good time to end this episode. So thank you everybody for watching. My name is Anthem. If you've enjoyed, give a thumbs up. Now do it, click thumbs down. Want to see more subscribe. And goodbye.